Jessica Tollefson, and thank you for joining. I'm so glad to have you here today. Welcome to my studio. So if this is your first time here, welcome, and thank you for coming. And if you've been here before, thank you for joining, and I'm so glad to see you again. So um, I'm going to uh, set up the chat here so that um, in case anybody uh, writes a comment, then I'll be able to answer and say hello, and we can interact and that type of thing. If you'd like to be quiet in the chat, that's perfectly fine too, and love to hear a comment from you, and any kind of feedback is really appreciated. So, all right, so here's the, get the chat set up. All right, great. So let's see here. All right, so we've got several people here and I welcome everybody. Let me go ahead and put it on the live chat. And hey, Madonna. Oh, hey, sister, hey, Madonna. Madonna and I decided that we are actually sisters um, <laughs> because we were born at the same time. And uh, she lives in Missouri, I live in Iowa. And also I want everyone to say hi to Muffin. This is my little dog, Muffin. So today's painting, uh, we're gonna work on this uh, sky, this uh, tree series painting that I have here. So this painting is, uh, I've got it on the canvas. Let me bring it up close to the camera. So, whoopsie, here we go. So here is the painting that I'm gonna be working on today. And this is done in a technique, and I'll kind of turn it to the side a little bit so you can hear. See a little bit better. You can hear uh, Grishy and Romeo. So this uh, tree series painting, I'm gonna be adding additional detail to this tree series painting. And let's also, um, I'm gonna adjust the camera here just so we've got it a little bit lower so we can see the whole canvas. There we go. And let's see, oh, we've got some people here. Hey, Steph, good to see you, and Miranda. Steph, thank you for joining, and Miranda, and Ian. Hey, Ian, and I liked your, um, my gosh, you did this long marathon. I was there for part of your marathon um, that you did, uh, the watercolor marathon. And uh, the Lily, hey, good morning, good to see you. So, um, so everyone, thank you for joining. So let's talk a little bit about the colors for today. Let me grab some of this paint. So I'm gonna be using uh, all golden acrylics. Uh, this first one is light ultramarine blue. Yeah, and Muffin says hi. <laughs> uh, Pyrrole orange. And Gershie and Romeo say hi too, by the way, if you guys can hear them back there. Uh, we've got yellow ochre, love yellow ochre. And yellow ochres are really a wonderful, uh, what I love about yellow ochre is it's a wonderful neutral. And Ian, yes, it is a big painting. It takes a lot of paint for this painting. Uh, this one is green gold and the dimensions are, yeah, 36 inches. I'll stand over here to get a sense of scale. Uh, 36 inches by 36 inches. And, um, and the goal here is I, I want, I've got a lot of the painting done but what I now want to be doing is adding additional colors. And I'll show you the little trick that I used today um, with the grayscale. So I'll be talking about the grayscale and how that helps me to mix paint. So, and actually, now's actually a good time. Oh, one other thing too, I'll show you. I'm gonna be painting with a, um, a Stay Wet palette. So here are the colors that I have here. Dioxazine Purple, Phthalo Blue Red Shade, Mars Black, Titanium White, uh, here's the Yellow Ochre, Diorolide Yellow. This is a light ultramarine blue. Um, yeah, three foot, it is, it's a, it is a big painting. It's, it's a nice size. Um, this is a primary yellow, pyrrole orange, and then green gold, the beloved green gold. And uh, for those of you who don't use Stay Wet palettes or that type of thing, uh, Masterson makes this one. This has a little sponge underneath and then you take the paper, this is like a membrane that you use, and you take this membrane and you soak it in, uh, in hot water for like say 10-15 minutes, something like that. And what will happen is this has, if you can kind of see, it's got like a really, um, it's not wet, but it's just a very damp surface. And what keeps this, um, if the membrane is touching against the sponge, there's no need for um, misting or additional spraying, that type of thing, which is super convenient. Then I also want to show you some of the tools I'll be using today. So, 
So here are, I've got a spoon. Um, these uh, spoons that I'm using are just for painting only. A couple different palette knives, all different sizes of palette knives and um, painting knives. So there's, there are knives that you can use for mixing, you can use them for painting. I actually kind of just use them interchangeably. Some people will say, you know, that this is a palette knife here and the other ones are painting knives, but a lot of times people will just use the terms uh, interchangeably. So let's set these over here. And then let's talk about the grayscale for mixing. So here's a little painting that I did, um, little guy, this little guy did just recently. And this painting is called um, Eloise, the, or the name of the painting is Eloise. And I did a couple little videos on uh, the making of Eloise uh, and uh, Danny, a couple little stories around Daddy Meadow Mouse and Eloise Daisy and Sam Daisy. And uh, how I did this was I use the gray scale when I'm deciding what colors to put where in the painting. So if you, whoopsie, if you look here, there are some greens and some turquoises and that type of thing, but they're very close in value, meaning that I can put them next to each other. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, lady. I appreciate that. I can put these colors next to each other and they will optically kind of blend, but they'll give a little different color temperature. So if I look through the value scale, the gray scale, when I look through here, you can peek through. So the scale goes from one to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, with white being a 10, and then um, black is a one. And ideally in a painting, you wanna try and go for, uh, a lot of times paintings will be, uh, most of the values will be in the middle but you want to make sure to have enough darks and enough lights in your painting for it to really pop. So for example, in this dark area here, um, I had a value two for the dark, the darkest parts here. And then um, this is actually pure white in the lightest part. So, and then the majority of the rest of the colors are done in these other, uh, these other values. And, um, oh, hey, Robert. Good to see you, and also thank you everyone who's joined. I appreciate you guys. So, all right, so now let's get painting, let's get started. So let's start, and again, using the gray scale, if on my painting I'm gonna wanna do, I'm gonna add some more blues in this section here, add some more blue color, but, um, but if I didn't know what color to put there and I'm just looking with my palette, what's really nice is in order to mix the right color, I can actually stick the gray scale up here. And hey, oh, hey lady, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Hola, <laughs> hola lady. All right, and oh, and Connie is here. Hey Connie, good to see you. So when I'm looking at this, what you do is you kind of squint and when I'm squinting, I'm looking and I'm seeing that the existing blue that I have here is somewhere between like a say four or a five. So when I'm mixing my color, when I compare it against white, you see that the four or the five all of a sudden looks very, very dark, but on the painting, it, it doesn't actually look that dark. So, um, so what I'll do is when I'm mixing on the palette, sometimes it can be confusing and people will, uh, like you mix a color and then you put it up there and it's like, oh no, it's not right, that type of thing. But by, doing, um, but by doing the grayscale, you can actually test your color before you put it on the canvas. So let's mix up a little color here. All right, so let's take some of the phthalo blue red shade and some of our titanium white and a little bit of the yellow ochre. I'll get the, we'll get this right up here. If you can see that right up there on the color. So this is making just kind of a nice, um, I'll say a neutral blue. It's, it's more of a denim kind of a blue. And what's nice is if you just have like a yellow and a red, I don't have red on here, but a yellow, and a black, white, and, and a blue. You can mix most colors um, yourself, but um, 
having the pre-mixed colors or having those already, it's, it's kind of nice. Okay, so this color, I like this color a lot. So what I'll now do is, um, oh, hey. Hey, Chrissy, I see that you're here, and Siri, thank you. And Chrissy, hi, and Siri, thank you for joining. And um, yeah, it's wonderful to have you guys all here. I appreciate that you're here. All right, so let's get our grayscale back out. And when I'm squinting through there, I feel like we have like about a value three or a four. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the white to make that lighter. So let's try this color now. So we'll just adjust it before we even go up to the canvas. We can adjust that color. There we go. Okay, so I think that color's looking good. Let's give it a little shot here with that. Okay, yes, that'll work. So, and in fact, I can just, I can just go like right up to the canvas um, with the color that I just mixed. So I'll put that here. Yeah, and I like that color. So this color is um, playing nicely next to the other uh, colors that I already have on the canvas. So this um, impasto technique uh, that I developed is called Daubism, and it's for the thick slabs of color that are put on with palette knives and with spoons. And what I'm doing is leaving gaps between all of the marks so that the canvas will also peek through. And then that canvas peeking through will give another level, um, another layer or level of dimension. So when I see, let's see here, I'll check the chat. Okay, and so everybody's giving greetings and, um, and I hope that you guys get a chance also to subscribe to one another. And uh, we have a wonderful community of friends here on YouTube, and I'm excited to be a part of that community, and, and you guys are all so nice. All right, so let's put a little mark here. And I try, and when I'm working on any individual painting, I am really trying to get a balance and a flow across. So I'm gonna actually use the same color all the way across the sky here. And if you look at a sky, a, a horizon is always the, um, the sky is always lightest here at the bottom. Uh, if you're looking at the, um, an actual sky, it's lightest here at the bottom. And as it goes up, it's more, and it's more uh, greens and yellow, green, blue, that type of a thing. Light colors, more leaning towards yellow on the color spectrum. And then up above, as you get higher up on your sky, your sky is going to get more purple as you get higher up, darker and more purple of a color. Even though it's still blue, these are going to be like lighter, more greeny blues. And then up here, darker, more purpley kind of blues. And so, oh, and thank you. Hey, Artsy. And, um, and Artsy, good to see you, and thank you for joining us here. And, um, okay, so let's get one more mark over here. And um, also, if I have missed anybody on the chat or if, um, if, if you're typing something and I'm missing, um, know that I will be going back and reading everything, and so I'll see all of your comments. And um, I hope that's a good thing. I'll see, <laughs> I'll see all of your comments. <laughs> I, yes, I will see all of your comments. So hopefully that's a, a good and positive thing. Um, yeah, okay, so Steph, you're asking, is this one going to a gallery? Uh, yes, this one is going to be going um, to a gallery, and, um, and so I'm getting it painted and getting it ready. And then after that, I'll be photographing it and, um, and then sending it for, their, uh, for them to see, and then they can get it loaded on their website. And then I'll either be shipping it, uh, or if it's in, like, for example, Madison or nearby here um, in Amana or in Sea Rapids, then I can just drive it over. So, and I see there's another comment here. Um, and you just read yours from yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. So, okay. And also, um, and Steph, uh, so Steph is the painting stoof. But Steph is doing um, a series of golf courses, and she just got a commission. So if you guys haven't been watching, and I want to say Steph is at uh, Tampa Bay. There's a, um, I don't remember the name of the course, 
but I, if I recall, the course is one of the holes um, on, a, on a course in Tampa Bay. So let everybody know if that's, um, if I, I believe that's true. If not, I apologize. All right, so let's get a few more marks here, okay? So uh, now that we did that blue, let's now contrast that. I'm actually gonna use this. Um, this is the uh, golden, we'll get that up here. This is the golden uh, light ultramarine blue, and this is just right out of the tube. So, so I'll also be um, applying some colors, and I try and on all my paintings, put a mix of colors that are straight from the tube, and then also these more complex colors, these more nuanced, um, grayed down and every time that you mix two colors together um, the color will never be as brilliant as it is directly out of the tube and so that's kind of just a little thing is that um, using paint right out of the tube there's a certain brilliance and um, color to it that is hard to get so all right and the other thing too um, Connie uh, Violet Connie uh, she just did a, uh, she just made, she also, in addition to the art that she does, she also makes handmade watercolors. And she just did um, some sparkle ones. Uh, Pixie, I think, was it Pixie? And um, Connie, I'm trying to remember what exactly are all of the names, but there is a blue, a beautiful blue, kind of a pinky red, but they're like super beautiful um, watercolors and they're in these little tins. And um, Luke Hanlon, she had sent some watercolors to him and he did a video uh, trying her watercolors out but um, but kind of those paints look absolutely beautiful that you've made so what I'll do now is let me just wipe off uh, wipe off the knife and then um, I also have a little bit of residue on here so how I handle that is I just take that into a little bucket of water and just getting with a bucket of water that allows me to get all of that gunk off of the knife because it's really super important, especially with the technique that I'm doing, that the knife be really super clean. Otherwise, it will leave um, strange marks on the paint. Okay, so Connie, you're saying metallic watercolors are your new set, and yeah, they're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, oh, Artsy, have I painted this all? No, I've been working on this one actually for a couple of months. Uh, what I'll tend to do on my paintings is I will uh, do an underpainting that's done first with just flat brushes. Then what I'll go in and, and start adding texture, I'll set the painting aside and then come back to it kind of again and again and uh, keep iterating at it. And what I'll tend to do is I have a drying room, so I'll set it aside in the drying room, drying room, won't look at it for a while, and then bring that thing back out and then say, okay, what does it need now? Kind of thing, so, okay. And Lily, okay, and so you're saying it's your first time uh, catching a live stream. Oh, well, thank you so much for saying that, Lily. I appreciate, I appreciate you, and I'm excited to be your first live stream, and I hope that, um, that you find that all the people here, all the people on these live streams are so nice, and they're really supportive. So I think you picked a good stream because we've got really nice people here. So that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, everybody, um, so your question, uh, Artsy, uh, sometimes I can do a painting all in one day. Um, I try to avoid doing that if I can. I try and do it over a series of uh, multiple sessions, uh, especially if then this one's acrylic um, when I'm doing oil painting. So like these little guys, um, what I'll tend to do is take these little guys here and then um, I'll go and uh, if this was done, for example, in oil, this one is, this one's acrylic but um, I also do the technique in oil, and I have a commission that I'm working on right now, a really large painting, uh, 30 by 40, and, and it's all in oil, and so I have to, it's gonna take five to six months for the painting to dry. The client, I have to have it done by mid-April, so I've been working um, kind of frantically getting that done, and, the, um, and I'll be doing a video, I'm actually I'm documenting it, so I'll have a couple of videos on that painting, but. Um, so as I've been painting it, I've been um, filming it. But this uh, painting done in oil, uh, it's going to have to be done, finished in mid-April in order for the client to have it in October because it was done in oil. If this were done in acrylic, it would be, you know, just several weeks before it could be shipped. So, and let's see, I'm going to uh, check the chat here. Um, 
okay and yes yeah uh, yes it is county it, it's uh it's intense yeah painting in one day would be um painting in one day is tricky to do but it can be done um, sometimes I'll do, you know, I'll be working on multiple paintings or if it's at like a painting demonstration, sometimes I'll try and have the sketch done ahead or have maybe the underpainting done and then just do the texture. Um, there is a um, painting event that I like to do in Amana, Iowa, and that you have to have, uh, you get three days to do it, but you start with a blank canvas. So what's nice is uh, you can, I can come back and add additional layers and that type of thing. So. Uh, I, it's important that the layers be dry before I'm putting the additional texture on. So, okay. All right, great. So now let's go in and add some of this uh, wonderful, the light ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna use, uh, actually, you know what? Let's switch tools. Let's grab, there's a little round one that's really fabulous. Let's get this little guy. Okay, so this little guy here, this little paddle, Put this on with the paddle. So I'm just uh, basically scooping it up onto the little paddle and we'll put him over onto the... and it makes a, just kind of a wonderful mark on the canvas. Let's go over here. And when I'm putting the paint on, I'm thinking about that if somebody is up really close to the painting, I want them to have an experience of having texture and have um, have it feel like there's a little bit of interest in all the different areas of the painting. I want them to be able to come up close and see detail and see a play of different colors all together. So when I'm really up close here, I can see all these different colors. And then when I'm further away, it's important to me that it reads like something. I want it to look like it's trees. And hopefully it looks like trees and a sky and a landscape. So I can also use the same tool to make larger marks, to make smaller marks. And uh, Romeo agrees. Romeo just gave a little chirp. Okay. So after putting on these marks, and we can step back and take a look. And let's see if uh, what the chat is saying. Um, okay, Ian, I am not doing acrylic April. I've heard of it. Um, what I'm doing is, um, well, I guess my own, <laughs> my own acrylic April, <laughs> which would be that I'm kind of working on some of these projects. And um, in spirit, I will be doing acrylic April because I'll be working with acrylic uh, every day in April, or I'll be working with oil. So maybe it's like acrylic slash oil April, Ian. <laughs> but not, not actually doing the actual challenge, but I think you're doing the challenge, aren't you? Something like that. Um, yeah, and so let's see. Um, okay, and then Robert, you said that you prefer her real name, and I actually do too, Steph, but it's, uh, you have a beautiful name. And then, um, and you're gonna be sleeping. Connie, it is very early. So Connie lives in Australia, I believe, right? Australia? Violet Connie, so, um, and then Madonna is gonna be working and watching Artsy. I love it, I love it. Okay, so let's get another mark up here. And Ian, um, if you wanted to, Ian, will you maybe explain too, maybe uh, everybody doesn't know what acrylic April is, if you wanted to maybe give a little bit of detail if you haven't already on the chat. Um, Australia. Okay, so you're in Australia. And Chrissy is having a brew, so is it tea time there? Let's see, it's 10.39 here, so that's if, are you, I, I think that you are five hours ahead, right, Chrissy? Because you're in England, and so that would be GMT. So that would be, um, I want to say, are you like around three something, around tea time? Um, so here's my Chris. When Chrissy has her brew, that's her um, that's her tea that she gets from Mona, or some, and she's bought some additional tea, but she has tea. I've got a little bit of water, so here's a little drink for Chrissy. Okay, there we go. It's 3:40. Okay, so you guys are um, yeah, so you're five hours different. All right, so here's just let's get one mark, one more mark up on here. 
Okay, so now it's time to wipe off again. And sometimes I can just wipe off. Well, no, I gotta use the water again. There we go. Okay, so next, let's go in and uh, let's address some of the, there's some flat, um, I'm gonna bring the painting back up so you guys can see again. And the painting is got, I'll just uh, flip the back of it if you can, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> so the painting is, uh, has, it's a stretched canvas. This is a cotton duck. And then I've got a wire back here with D-rings. And this painting is very heavy now with all this paint on here. But uh, let's get this up close. So, um, so the texture that we have now I want to go in and add some in. I'm going to try not to touch it so we don't get wet. Something in this uh, this area of the trees. There we go. Oh, and I see that I did get a little bit of, I got a little bit of paint on my finger. Let me get that wiped off. And now, um, Mama, if you are watching later, yes, I got, I did get dirty and here's, I'll have to wipe off. Okay, so thank you for saying that, and thank you, you guys. You guys are so nice. I appreciate how supportive you guys are. You're wonderful. So what I want to now do is mix a color that's going to go right in this passage through here, and I can use it um, elsewhere in the tree section. So I want to pick a value that is going to be close so when I mix it, so I'm going to squint, hold my grayscale gray up. And when I'm squinting at it, do you guys agree this looks like about a value 5 or a 4? Something like that. Uh, when you squint at this part of the tree through here, well, maybe a little lighter. I think we're actually a 6. Okay, so I'm going to try and um, get something that's going to be a value 6. And let's see here, um, okay, so, um, and Robert, you say you feel weird calling someone <laughs> with a different name. <laughs> okay, all right, and Ian, yeah, tell everybody about um, how acrylic April is a little bit like Inktober, right? And I know a lot of people did Inktober. I never did Inktober, but it looked like it was a lot of fun. So again, now I know that I want to, when I put this six, when I put a value six against the painting, it looks light, but when I put it up against the palette, it looks actually dark, and that's the deceiving part of mixing paint. So the key is to follow the grayscale and don't follow what your eye is telling you on the palette because it will tend to, it'll tend to actually be the wrong color. All right, so let's get a little bit of white. Let's get some yellow. Let's get a little bit of the yellow ochre. And then now, let's do a little bit of the dioxazine purple. And let's see if we can mix up a good color for the trees. Okay, I'm liking that color a lot. We'll give a test here and see. Oh, and I see, yeah, Robert, you're saying Inktober, you're saying Inktober is really fun. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people did it and they enjoyed it. So this is a six. So I think we're about, I actually think we're really pretty close here with the six. Let's go ahead and try. Um, the other thing to do is you can hold it up to the canvas then as a test and it looks like that will work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a different knife. So I mixed with this particular knife, but what I'm gonna do here is use a different knife to apply the paint. I'll use a little thinner, smaller knife. So when you're working in impasto, just like having different brushes, having different knives to apply the paint is always a, a fun thing or a good thing to do. And um, so here, I'll show you. This is my largest knife that I 
um, we'll use. <laughs> and, uh, putting paint on with this fella, this is just uh, kind of crazy uh, to experience to put this on because it makes really large marks. And then sometimes, you know, I also will use this bigger guy. Actually, you know what, instead of using a small one, let me use this bigger, um, this bigger knife. And again, some people call them palette knives. Some people call these palette knives, they're technically painting knives. And you can tell a palette knife from a painting knife. A palette knife is something like this, where it's, um, it's flat coming from the handle out. It's flat. And uh, sometimes we'll have a little bit of a thing, like a little bit of an edge, like this guy. Or not the other guy. I had another one that has a uh, less of an edge. But these are these when they have a hook on them like this, they have a hook so that you keep your paint away from your fingers. So technically, this is a uh, painting knife. But people use the term palette knife and painting knife interchangeably. But let's go ahead and use this guy. Let's stick it on with this guy here. I try in my work to have, um, okay, and so Violet, you're saying, let's see. Oh, and so Violet, did you do Inktober? I didn't realize that. I'll have to go back and take a look. Yeah, okay, and you've never done landscape oil painting, Robert. Um, if you guys haven't seen Robert's channel yet, definitely go out and check it out. He is um, extremely talented and um, and then Robert, say hi to brother. <laughs> say hi to your brother for me. Um, Robert lives with his brother, and they have uh, they have kind of an interesting dynamic. So let's get this color. <coughs> excuse me. Let's get this color. <coughs> excuse me. You know what? I will need a drink of water. Let's say let's get this color up on the canvas. Oh, and Connie, you said that um, you did Inktober with your son. That's awesome. Well, that's fun to do that together. And then, um, oh, Robert, you said brother is right there with you. Well, tell brother that we all say hi and that uh, brother needs to be nice to you. All right, so I'll make a few marks on here. And again, working for balance on the canvas. Um, if I'm putting some over here, I'm going to also try and have... Uh, have some of that same color across over here. And uh, just searching on the canvas to see what area might like a mark. Let's put one here. And then when I'm putting the marks on, I'm also aiming for a mix of um, uh, flat marks, scooped marks, uh, trying to get as much texture and, and so that the texture is not all the same. The texture is variable. Uh, the marks, I'm putting the marks um, for the most part uh, vertically here for the sky, horizontally to show the shape of the trees and the movement, the way the growth goes. And then I'm working to get the grasses going, um, you know, more of in a horizontal way. But uh, other paintings, what I'll do is just kind of scatter wherever the marks go and uh, have a balance that way. But I'm basically, again, looking for balance, so. Um, okay, and then Ian is saying, Chrissy, how about a large painting like this with a full day live? Oh my gosh, that would be a marathon. Chrissy, I think you should go for it. Wouldn't that be so awesome? The person would be exhausted um, at the end. But, you know, Ian, when you guys did yours, you guys uh, had, you had multiple people working on it, though, right? I mean, it was Danina and you and a bunch of other people were all painting when you did that. All right, we'll get a mark here. Great, okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I, how I like to mix up a green. All right, and oh, Joe, hey, Joe Leg, good to see you. So glad to have you here, Joe. And um, Joe was painting along with Chrissy's horse painting and did a really beautiful job. You did a really, uh, really great one. So um, very good to see you. And Connie, good night, and thank you for, thank you for stopping by. It's it's wonderful. And I also I, I'm very appreciative of everybody who's here, and I'm so glad that you're here. And thank you for joining. 
So uh, let's mix up a green, and uh, I'm going to mix a green using our primary yellow. And uh, whoops, we've got a little, a little uh, other color here. Let me get that marked up. There we go. Okay, so we've got our yellow, and then let's add just a little touch of black to make a green. And so the black is a super, you can see that the black is a really strong tinter because just the tiniest amount of the black made a um, really dark green. All right. And let's get that up onto our canvas over here. There we go. And let's do a mark over here. And so, um, oh, Joe, I have green gold. I have it on the palette, and let's put that on next. Okay, so here is my, um, here's my green gold right here. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, okay, so here's our green gold. Where is it on the, let me, right here. Okay, here's our green gold. So you can see that the color I mixed um, with the yellow plus the black is not as bright, and that was that whole idea too. If you mix two colors together, it will never be as bright typically as it is right out of the, if there's a color that came right from the tube. But let's take our green gold and um, let's add a little white to him. Let's see what happens if we add a little white to green gold. Because we have to have green gold. And I'm just looking at the chat. Oh, Tiana DIY, hi and welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. That's awesome. If you guys uh, have met Tiana yet, she's got a great channel. All right, so, uh, so I added a little bit of white to the green gold and let's go ahead and get that also here on the landscape. Let's put him down here. So, um, I like the idea of having as many different colors as possible because like when you go and you are out, um, you know, looking at your grass and your lawn or if you're out at a, a botanical garden or something and you look, uh, it seems like there's never ever just like one shade of green or one shade of blue. There are always so many, even on one flower, on one blade of grass, you can always see so much variation. And so I'm really trying to um, give the experience up here on the painting. I'm trying to give this experience and let me bring that up again and show you uh, the idea of having a variety, as many varieties of colors as possible. So up in here, although I'm trying to stay within certain values, certain color values, I'm trying to get a variety and I don't know if the camera's picking all of those up but by individually mixing it each time, um, it allows for a variety of different colors. So, so let me see. Oh, Romeo wants to sing and let's pick a tune. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so Romeo and Groshi, um, when I took the canvas down, you can maybe see Romeo and Groshi back there. These are my little cockatiels. So can you see them back there? So this is uh, Romeo and Groshi back there. And um, Groshi, they're cockatiels. So cockatiels are a type of parrot, and they're indigenous to the Australia area. So if you guys have a song that I could maybe attempt to whistle, we'll see if we can activate Romeo to, um, let's see if we can get the painting joy. You're, you are brother, Robert's brother. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love it. I love it. Hi, Robert's brother. The painting joy and welcome. Um, so glad to have you here. That's awesome. Okay, so Joe says another one bites the dust. And wandering, thank you for joining. Wandering, good to see you. And um, I'm glad that you're here. So um, okay, so let's try another one bites the dust. While I mix some paint, let's see if we can activate Romeo 
through a song. So right now he's just doing his kind of little random chirps, but we'll, let's see if we can do it. Um, and I'll mix up a color here. Let me mix up another green. So let's get more yellow. All right, so, okay, Romeo, are you ready back there? Let's make a dark green. I'll add some white. I'll just do the, the chorus. Do you hear him? Do you hear him starting? doing it let's see um and the lily you have you love cockatiels and their tweets yes i love cockatiels too i do they're wonderful oh and hey Kenise, good to see you and thank you for joining it's uh, wonderful to have you here today and um yes and and bless him <laughs> yeah okay let's try another song um let's try another song for uh, give me some ideas of another song you want to hear for Romeo to try. Let's see if we can get him going. He is trying it now. He is doing it. Let's try another song with Romeo. Oh, he is doing it. Okay, um, <laughs> we have a giddy hour. The birds are singing pencil, hello pencil. Great to have you here. And if I've missed anyone, I apologize. I will be checking um, all of your comments and I'll be checking all of that in the chat. So, so thank you so much for being here. Okay. So Pencil did a new um, type of video where he is now narrating in addition, a lot of times he would do a drawing. So he does live streams where he's obviously narrating because he's talking. But then he, um, he had been doing uh, before his other videos, uh, more short format videos where he was um, having music. And this time he tried talking and it's really good. So check that out if you guys haven't seen that yet. So, okay, so let's see. Um, he is singing his little heart. Okay, dance. Chrissy, you're going to say Dancing Queen by ABBA. Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm sure that Romeo is like, oh, he's doing it. Do you hear him? Oh my gosh. All right, Romeo, it's your time. Oh, <laughs> okay, and let's see here. Oh, dancing queen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and Romeo is the best. And Groshi, and Groshi is just his silent helper, his little, um, his little friend. Okay, Romeo really likes, let me, let me, um, let me wipe this off. Romeo really likes that. He likes dancing cream. Let's try a little more. <laughs> oh my gosh, Romeo. Romeo. There, oh, he's got it. I love it. Okay, awesome, Romeo. Yes, okay, it's awesome. All right, so now let's go in and make an, uh, let's make some more blue. Let me get a little bit more white on my palette. Okay, so we've got some more white. Let's make another blue here. Let's take some more of the phthalo blue red shade. Okay, and so, um, okay, Pencil says, uh, forget Dancing Queen, he should sing Dancing Dina. <laughs> oh, that's off, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, Dina and Romeo in the club. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it, you guys. Oh, Joe, your puppy can sing. How fun is that? Oh my gosh. Yes. Steph, you need a bird. You need a bird. I love it. Oh, that's great. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see if he can sing another song. All right, so this is the Thalo Blue Red Shade. We've got white. Let's add I Love Yellow Ochre because it tends to uh, mute down pretty much every color that it goes with because you can make your own version of um, Yellow Ochre by taking Yellow Primary and Dioxazine Purple and make a color that's very similar. All right, so let's add, let's add quite a bit more white to this. And let's add more, um, actually let's add some yellow, some of the diarylide yellow. What I'm looking for is I'm thinking about a color that we would put down in this area, and I wanna make sure that it's light enough and has enough uh, kind of yellow color in it. Let's take all that white. Okay, so let's look and see if you guys have ideas here for um, um, Country Road Takes Me Home. We could do that. Um, yeah, so I, um, um, and thank you, Tiana. You're so nice. Um, okay, and, and Steph, it was great to see you. Steph, great to see you. And I think you should go get a cockatiel. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's try Country Roads Take Me Home. All right, let's try it. And that's probably so, oh, I think I heard him. I'm, I'm like, uh, I know it's not in tune, but I don't think Romeo minds. Okay, Romeo. He's not responding to country roads. Is he? Romeo, why aren't you singing? Rocket girl, yes. Okay, all right, let's try Hotel California. Um, the Macarena. I don't know if I can do the Macarena song. Um, hey, Macarena. having none of that. Let's see. Let's try another one. Okay. Um, let's try. Oh. I'll just do the Hey Macarena part. Will he even? I think Romeo is. Romeo really liked Dancing Queen, didn't he? Um, oh, Romeo doesn't care about the tune and neither do we. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Hotel California. Um, let's like welcome to the Hotel California. See, Romeo's having none of it. All right, well, we'll ask him later if he wants to sing later. All right, let's get more. Uh, let's add more blue here to this, more of the um, phthalo blue red shade. And this can be further up on the sky, this darker color. So if you have a color, so here we're just making a really kind of a nice dark denim blue that can go on the painting. There we go. All right, let's give this one a try. Let's 
see what we have here. Oh yeah, I like that color. It's got a lot of kind of a green to it. This, uh, this color, and I'm just laying these like little petals, laying these bits of color on the canvas and just gradually building it up. So this technique, I developed this technique in, uh, called Dalbism. What happened was I'd always really liked, um, I'd been painting in a really kind of a smooth style, but also always with texture. And um, this was a, a way um, I had put a bunch of paint on with a palette knife once. And then I liked the look of just the, kind of the, the thing that was happening with just the paint only. And then um, this is back a little bit before the year 2000. And then um, after a while, then started to work with different sizes of marks, having the marks form a shape, that kind of a thing over time. There we go. Okay, so let's check let's check the chat here, and then see. Oh, hey, Alsh, Alshanon, thank you for joining and welcome back again. You were in the last live stream um, that I did with the oranges, and really good to see you. And uh, yeah, Chrissy, he, um, um, an ABBA fan. Definitely Romeo is an ABBA fan and not, uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to care about John Denver. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, and Joe, yes, these are birch trees. Absolutely, they're birch trees. And, um, and so yeah, it's, I'm really glad that you guys are here and it's so nice to have you in the studio. So let's uh, get a color here. All right. So this kind of turquoisey teal color, um, this is just kind of a thing too that um, you don't have to have many colors to paint. You can really mix your, all your own colors um, however you like. Get another mark over here. All right. And sometimes what I'll do, let me um, get this wiped off now. Okay, the paper towel. All right, so let's get just another mark here. And let's put a little bit of the yellow. So sometimes what I'll also like to do, I'm gonna try and really get the, I have to get the tool all the way wiped off, all the way clean. And then um, your puppy is singing now. Oh, is that so sweet? I love that, Joe. That is so awesome that your puppy sings. What kind of a dog do you have, Joe, by the way? Let us know in the chat. What I'll do now is I'm on the painting, I'm going to put... Um, Okay, so let's do a little bit of just this styrolite yellow. I'm just going to apply that directly onto the canvas for a little bit of brightness. And um, I want to try to draw attention to the bright parts of the trees. And just using this little knife here. I got a mark in a form I didn't like, so I'll just put another daub on top. And then what I also will sometimes do is put um, marks elsewhere to try and just bring the color elsewhere on the canvas. So just a couple little marks here and here as well. All right. So. All right, well, I think this is good for today, and I, um, I hope that you guys um, will come back again and visit me again in the studio. So I wanted to say thank you so much for being here, and um, I'm going to keep working uh, after, um, after we go. I'll work a little bit more on this canvas and get it finished off, but I want to say thank you for joining me, and please make sure that you subscribe, and, and I hope to see you again in the studio. So until next time. This is Dina Tollefson, and bye-bye.